Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Town of Athens, Freshville Town Meeting, December 15th. 2021. The legal voters of the town of Athens are hereby warned and notified to meet in the Athens Elementary School in said town on December 15, 2021 at 6 p.m. to transact the uh, following business from the floor. A couple of things we will go over. First, um, the meeting will be run by Robert Rules of Order. Um, we're not in conflict with Vermont law. Only voters uh, may speak um, and may vote. Uh, if you cannot bring your ballot up, if we do a paper ballot, uh, one of the justices of the peace will go and pick up your ballot, but you cannot have your friend or neighbor um, sitting beside you bring the ballot up. Any discussions shall be directed toward the chair uh, and not intermingled among the uh, audience. Um, if when you're called on um, to speak, you will not be called on again until everybody else who wishes to speak has had their chance to uh, speak. We're asking that everybody uh, wear a mask. Looks like everybody does have one, but we're asking that. Um, and seven voters may request a paper ballot uh, when we get to the questions. For that, can we call out the checklist? Elizabeth Agostini, Susan On, Amy Aldrich here, Scott Aldrich. Amanda Elsvig. Here. Cherie Elsvig. Here. Eric Elsvig. Here. Shirley Elsvig. Emily Amana. Oh, I'm sorry. Elise Amana. Then Emily Amana. Crystal Amadon. Bridget Anderson. Jean Anderson. Catherine Anderson. Robert Anderson, Wichi Atu, Here. Here. Douglas Avery, Michael Bates, Here. David Bemis, Here. Faith Bemis, Jacqueline Bemis, Anthony Benware, Sean Benware, Mark Berman, Tamara Berman, Catherine Bailey, Carol Bingham. Here. Loretta Bissonette? Here. Jason Bissonette? William Borsi? Yep. Michelle Bullrice? Kathleen Bova? Here. Robert Bova? Mary Brass? Nora Bright? Russell Brown? Richard Bubar? Kelsey Birch? Peter Berdow? David Burns? Donald Capincelli? Here. Sandra Capincelli? Here. Addie Chase? Charles Chase? Here. James Chase? Heather Shador? April Clough? Here. John Clough? Here. Corey Coburn? Hillary Cook? Cassandra Cl Crane? Nathaniel Crane? Here. Barbara Crosby, Donna Currier, here. Candace Damon, here. Emily David Devignon, Elaine Davis, here. Elmer Davis, here. Kenneth Davis, Mary Davis, Leonard Derby the Third, Paul DeRusso, Frederick Drawer, Carmen Dresser. Anita Doobie, Austin Doobie, Landon Doobie, 
Don Elliott, Jane Elliott, Joshua Ferret, Elena Fine, Rebecca Fine, Stephen Fine, Cora Fletcher, Timothy Fletcher, Douglas Francis, Susan Darrow, <coughs> Gary Gay Jr., Krista Gay, here. Tammy Gay, here. Sabrina Gibbs, here. Scott Gibbs, Roger Gillespie, Sandra Gillespie, Christopher Glebus, Deborah Glebus, Stephen Godfrey, Melissa Goyette, Mark Grieco, here. Jesse Grover, Nathan Guest, Bradley Gwynn, William Hall, Ralph Harris, Tammy Harris, David Hassan, Kim Healy, Valerie Hebert, Emretta Hinman, Bonnie Hitchcock, here. Diane Hitchcock, here. Cole Hitchcock, Raymond Hitchcock, here. Scott Hitchcock, Bartlett Holmes, Jacqueline Holmes, Gretchen Horton, Jean Hotelling, Debbie Houle, Michael Houle, Michael R. Houle, Dennis Hunt, here. Karen Hunt, here. Beverly Hutchins, Thomas Hutchins, here. Lori Endenbaum, Samuel Endenbaum, David Jacobson, here. Carmen Jones, Jabari Jones, Philip Jones, Nina Kendall, Elaine Keyes, Valerie Kosednar, Christine Lawson, Angela Lashway, Lima Leland, Caleb Lemieux, Patricia Lentz, Isaac Leslie, Here. Joseph Lavangi, John Lindblad, Linda Lindblad, Samuel Lockerbie, Carl Long, April Lyman, Here. Doug Lyman, Here. James Maid, Mary Maid, Terry Maid, Carista Machado, John Masajowski, Here. Virginia Masajowski, Here. Deborah Matt, Here. Cheryl Maher, Here. Jonathan Maloney, Manny Mansback, Edmund Martin, Megan Masco, Pat McCaffrey, William McGivney, Tracy Miller Sweet, Abigail Miner, Dennis Morante, here. Ellen Morante, here. Grace Mooney, Lynn Morgan, here. Philip Morgan, here. James Nehart, here. Timothy Nehart, Derek Norris, Michelle Norris, Michiko Northup, Alyssa Noyes, Corey Noyes, here. Daniel Noyes, Harold Noyes, here. Nathaniel Noyes, Patricia Noyes, Rebecca Noyes, Tanya Noyes, Tracy Noyes, Stephen W. Oaks, John Oberling, here. Jeff Pilecki, Abijah Palmer Guest, Judith Palmer Guest, Jeremy Peach, Eleanor Perry, Elizabeth Perry, here. Janet Perry, here. Matthew Perry, here. Michael Perry, here. Rita Pichat, here. Benjamin Pitts, Justin Poulin, Peter Prescott, Doreen Pugh, Denise Randall, here. Elizabeth Randall, Frederick Randall, Joshua Randall, Sarah Rattat, Hannah Regeer, here. Sheila Ritchie, Kenneth Roberts, Joshua Ross, Nicole Ross, Lucius Rumrell, Philip Rumrell, Don Rout Jackson, Judy Rout Jackson, Pamela Russo, yeah. 
Evan Sabatelli, Mary Ann Shaughnessy, Matthew Shea, Eric Shearing, Sarah Sheltra, Dean Silver, Susan Silver, George Simmons, George Simmons Jr., Donna Simino, Philip Simino, Lois Sippel, Barbara Smith, Daniel Smith, Jennifer Smith, Dwayne Snide, Irvin Snide Jr., Here. Mary Sonickson, Alexa Spivey, Alexandria Steele, Amber Stevens, Here. Dolly F.H. Stevens, Ivor Stevens, Here. Lane Stevens, Morgan Stevens, Timothy Stevenson, Here. Matthew Stickney, Here. Wayne Stone, Harry Streeter, Alexis Taylor, Here. Daniel Taylor, Here. Kylie Taylor, Here. Linda Taylor, Here. Tara Taylor, Here. Thomas Taylor, Here. Tyson Taylor, Here. Nicole Tibaldi, Adrian Tenney, Bruce Tenney Jr. Here. Bruce Tenney Sr. Here. Senior. Senior. No. No. Daryl Tenney. Here. Matthew Tenney. Patricia Tenney. Here. Jonathan Thomas. Edward Todd. Here. Joyce Todd, Andrew Topher, Mark Trinkman, Mark Trenholm, Crystal Trimble, Here. James Trimble, Here. Linda Tripati, Jesse Unwin, Kenneth Unwin Sr., Andrew Valoff, Brian Valoff, Renee Van Kieran, Louis Vitale, Sarah Vitale, Margaret Walker. Here. Terrence Walker. Here. Anna Warren. Here. David Warner. Amiko Warrius. Stephen Warrius. Jay White. Raymond White. Tina White. Here. Bruce Whitman. Russell Wickberg. Deborah Wicker. Devin Wicker, Zachariah Wicker, Here. Michelle Wilkins, Here. Ralph Wilkins, Here. Jenna Williams, Jimmy Williams, Sharon Williams, Henry Woodbury, Here. Catherine Woodbury, Darlene Wyman, Here. and Jacqueline Whitefler. All right, is there anybody um, whose name, they did not hear the name called? I just my name, <clears throat> Emily and Mama. Okay. Is there anybody else? I showed up a little late, Scott Aldrich. Scott, Scott Aldrich. Aldrich. <clears throat> anybody else? If anybody sees somebody come in after this, <clears throat> if they will let the uh, clerk know, um, <clears throat> That they uh, that they are here, so she can record that they're here. All right. Article one: Shall the town of Athens elect its town officers at it, at all future annual and special meetings by Australian ballot pursuant to Title 17 Vermont Statutes Annotated 2680B? We have discussion on this. Do we have a motion? I make the motion. All right. Is there a second? Not a second. Is there a discussion? Carol Bingham? Okay, bear with me. I get real nervous. So, um, I've been attending town meetings for years, even before I was able to vote, and the meetings were up in the meeting house. Um, do to COVID, things as usual changed. 
and for the first time, a majority of Athenians got to weigh in and lend their voices to town issues that were important. I know that this meant a lot to many. The elderly, the health impaired, and those unable to lose a day of work to attend our regular town meetings were able to, vote, to lend their voice. My Aunt Cora, who many of you know, is 97, was really excited because last year she was finally able to vote once again. For years, the minority has has ruled over the majority because of attendance. I'm asking that we please consider all of our townspeople. Thank you for listening and vote yes on Article 1, please. Same thing here. Article 1 asks the question of whether or not we are willing to have our elected officials voted in by Australian ballot. It is a simple yes or no question. If you say yes, then you are allowing other voters in our town that have been unable to attend town meetings a chance to have their voice heard in the governance of our town. If you say no, then you are not willing to change, adapt, and allow these voters to be included Excuse me. in the process of determining who governs our town. There are those that will complain that we have always chosen people from the floor to fill vacancies. I can't breathe. Sorry. <laughs> in offices when required. It is really the best way to, is this really the best way to determine who governs our community? As a lister, I have worked with more than one person nominated from the floor and it hasn't always worked out. Maybe this person accepted the nomination due to the fact that they didn't want to disappoint the neighbor or they felt pressured into accepting. Most do not realize that when standing there and accepting a nomination, no matter for what office, that there is more to it than just a title and when they find out the responsibilities and or time requirements, it will dawn on them that they should have declined. Having offices filled through Australian ballot means that anyone uh, who really wants to run for office needs to find out beforehand what is required and must submit a petition to have their name on the ballot. I don't see this as a bad thing. I see it as people truly wanting to hold office and be part of town government. Article 2 asks if we want to adopt all budgetary and money articles by a starting ballot. Point of to order. this I say no. Point of order. This does not relate to Article 1. Sandy has the floor, but yes, we are discussing Article 1. Okay, then I'll save the rest for Article 2. Mm. The only thing that I wanted to mention in regards to Article 1 is the potential hurdles, not hurdles, just things that people have to go through in order to run. If Article 1 is passed, in order to run, a candidate will have to do five things. They'll have to decide more than two months in advance to run. They'll have to put together a nominating petition, collect signatures, turn that in six weeks before town meeting, and then also campaign. Although those, although those may not seem like big hurdles or things, they are things that could potentially keep otherwise qualified people who are simply new to town, not outgoing or younger from running. And I'm speaking from my own experience here. A few years ago from the floor, I was nominated and elected to the Campbell Fund as a trustee. Although that's not a big role, it was how I got involved with town. And I never would have committed to something two months in advance the thought of having to get signatures is quite scary. And then also having to campaign. We had our first time with campaigns this past year and it wasn't a particularly pleasurable experience and not something I'd necessarily want to go through again. And so the only thing that concerns me with Article 1 is that you may prevent people from running who may otherwise come up and not necessarily be convinced by their neighbors but encouraged. And I'm sure that, at least for me, as someone who's been involved and elected from the floor, I wouldn't have run. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity I had to get involved. Um, I, I wanted to get clarification. Um, 
According to Senator White, uh, anyone can participate by speaking or asking questions. They don't have to be a voter as long as the moderator asks for the will of the body to allow them to. That's correct. It has to be a unanimous consent. If you have uh, no nominations for a position, can you still um, elect somebody from the floor? You could write in their name on the ballot, is my understanding. Anybody else? Anybody else before we go back to Jared? How many offices are typically elected each year? I don't have the number of that. I mean, we know of the top ones, treasurer, clerk, select board, one, usually one select board member. Unusual circumstances, it might be two. But there are a lot of other lesser offices. It is, um, I think Krista was just pointing out, um, to think about and plan for those that far in advance, we may find a lot of empty slots when it comes to having a ballot. Um, I will also speak to the fact that um, from a floor meeting five years ago, because she's up for re-election again this year, we were lucky enough to get Candace Damon on the meeting house committee, and because Candace Damon is on our committee, we are lucky enough to have a $50,000 grant that we're going to be able to use. So I think there is certainly some benefit. I, I, re I appreciate the concern about um, the numbers of people that voted last year on town meeting um, compared to the number that are usually at an in-person town meeting. I think that in looking back at some numbers, that was also a very unusual number <coughs> relative to any other um, Australian ballot vote that happened in town, which would be mostly on November elections for president and whatnot. So that kind of raises some questions for me as to why that might have stood out so much as a, a real outlier in Australian ballots in town. Um, I feel like there are other steps that we could perhaps take to try and understand why we have not had the kind of in-person um, attendance and participation that would allow people to vote on the day of town meeting um, before taking a drastic step like this. We're a very small town. Um, I don't think that at this point in time, I think I would be opposed to this article um, and, and prefer to explore other options. All right. Just to answer Carrie's question, about 16 um, people are Each nominated. Year. And so only so, about four or five of them are sort of those higher level offices that we think of. Correct. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I have a question um, for the select board. How are you, as a select board, going to ensure us as a voting body that the Australian ballot, for lack of um, a better word, some of the illegal stuff that went on at the March meeting, how are you going to ensure us that that is not going to happen this time? That's a real concern for me. Being there and seeing some of the stuff it, with my own eyes, it's a big concern of some of the stuff that was going on. Certainly, if there were issues with the last election, they will tr certainly try to be corrected in any election. We try and uh, follow uh, the rules uh, as very best we can. Um, and certainly, we want it to be exactly as it should be. That's Anybody not really else? an answer to how you're going to handle some of the stuff that was happening. John. Um, can you, do you know what those issues are? Can you tell us I, I hadn't heard of that before. So. I'm asking. so some of the issues that I witnessed was um, people were allowed to come in and get other ballots for other people that were not husband and wife. 
Um, there were ballots left on Darlene's doorstep. Um, we were supposed to have two Justice of the Peace go with a ballot. We had one. Um, that's just a few of them. There was people bringing in ballots that were not their ballots, dropping them off for family members. According to the state's attorney and the state, the secretary of state, you, they, that can't happen. That's correct. And that was happening last year. So how are you going to reassure me that that's not going to happen this year? And there was no tally kept of what ballots went out and what ballots came back in until we started opening them and counting them that day. Well, I think there was a tally of the votes uh, that came in uh, to the ones that went out. Because we had to mail out ballots and, and they came in as being the person that voted. Not all ballots were mailed. Some, Some ballots, ballots were picked up. Some, Some ballots, ballots were picked up and that can be done. So, all right. Tom. Can you tell me how many voted last year? I don't have that figure. Because it don't look like there's that many of them here tonight. There ain't 190 here tonight. Yeah, I just wanted to tell Tom, I think it was 100, almost 190 votes cast. I believe it's 196, but yeah, I can't answer that. Yeah. I'm just wondering if this is about COVID and us not wanting to be in a situation like this in person in March. Can we amend the article so that it's just for one year? I believe to do that, we would have to then vote again on it. I believe we, if we vote on it, it stays until the town votes again on it. And I don't think that that would be appropriate to, that would be too, uh, too major of an amendment to this uh, to make it, to, to change this uh, to say one year and instead of. That would, be too, that would be too much? I believe it would be too okay. much of a, of a um, too much of a, an amendment to make on to this basic motion. But it can be voted again by the town uh, at a regular or special town meeting. And if, uh, if an article wanted to be put on the March town meeting to eliminate this, it could be done. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I just wanted to say that what Tina talked about didn't happen because I bring my fathers in and they told me right off the bat that that couldn't happen. David had to go out to your fifth house with me and my father fell out right out in front of him and David took it back. Which is only one person. Maybe one person, but he did it. It's, Why wouldn't he do it for everybody else? It's not the way the state says to do it. Well, you weren't there. I was. There wasn't two justices of the peace available. There was myself and a, another uninterested party that came out there to it. Um, but you're right, there should be two justices, but they weren't two available. So. so that would mean that two justices would need to be available throughout the whole day, or would appointments need to be made at what time? That something they could be worked out. Okay. Two justices should be available. <clears throat> Is there any other discussion? Anybody else before we go back? She, uh, Sandy had, oh, no, go ahead. Uh, just like, so for a point of clarification, it sounds like there's concern with seats not being filled because of the process that this amendment would take for a potential candidate to um, be nominated. Is there some sort of like, compromise or hybrid where unfilled seats would then have the possibility to be filled from a, a meeting and from the floor or how how would that work for the unfilled seats? My understanding is it could be right in votes uh, on the Australia ballot if somebody wished to uh, or decided they wanted to uh, they could have a right in uh, and right in votes would, would uh, work and as if a position is not filled at a regular town meeting, um, it would be usually the select board or the cemetery commission or uh, the school board that would fill a position, depending on which 
uh, which office was empty. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they would be appointed by one of those? One of those three boards if nobody got the right in votes and nobody ran for it. Okay. All right. All right. Sandy, did you have, we'll go yeah. back to you. If nobody else has anything, we'll go back. Sandy? I want to say this is the application form. You need 1% of the voters list, which means three people. Three. You don't have to campaign. We've always done it word of mouth. Why can't we continue that way? Another thing is last year, yeah, we made mistakes. So did many other towns. It was an emergency situation. And I think for what was thrown at us, we did pretty damn good. We didn't have any votes that came in that were illegal. Everybody was a registered voter. You Darlene us? kept tab of every vote that went out and every vote that came in. All right. as, as I said before, you need to address, address the moderator, not inter, inter, go, yeah. All right, anybody else? Tina, did you want to say something else? I'm just saying what I saw and I do not feel confident that that's not going to happen again. We can't have people leaving ballots on people's doorsteps. And I know that happened because someone told me to call Darlene to tell her that they were there. So, you know, and I know other people that picked up ballots that were not theirs and returned them that were not theirs. Anybody else have anything to add to this? I just wanted to clarify the difference between Australian and paper ballots. So if there is an Australian ballot election, like if, if you vote Article 1 and it happens by Australian ballot, you don't sit at town meeting with your Australian ballot, talk about potential candidates as this hybrid models have been suggested, and then turn it in. They're two separate events. There would be, if there is any form of town meeting, an event here at the school. Meanwhile, there'd be a separate ballot like you have for president that you'd be turning in at the town office or wherever the collection box is. You're not sitting at town meeting thinking of potential write-ins. They're two completely separate processes. And then the other thing too is at town meeting, just to clarify, people aren't gonna know if Article 1 is voted down and voting remains in person from the floor, people don't need to know who you vote for. You, you vote by a paper ballot. So I just wanted to clarify that those would be two separate processes and there's not a hybrid model available for that. Right. All right. Anybody? Yeah, I'm impressed with the turnout tonight, but suspect that if we had had the meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning, that a lot fewer people would have been able to come. And I really agree with the idea that we have not explored um, what would make these meetings more available? After all, the town of Westminster has their meetings at night, and I think they get a fairly good turnout. I also suspect that people that come will come, and that others who don't, like if I was impressed uh, not only with the turnout tonight, but also with the long list of people that were read off who aren't here tonight. And I, and I feel like those people probably have sentiments about this as well. So I'm, I must admit, I'm, I'm really in favor of a regular town meeting where we see people and talk with people and not do things by paper ballot. I agree with those that have expressed reservations about the Australian ballot, that it does lend itself to mistakes, intentional or otherwise. And I feel like that's avoided uh, much better if we have uh, candidates with their faces in front of us and that we nominate them and they say, yes, I'll run for office. So I'm for uh, <coughs> voting no on this first proposition. A uh, couple of things. Krista is correct. All elected offices have to be elected by ballot, by paper ballot. Um, and you do not have to be present to then get elected either. So, all right, who else? John. Yeah, I was wondering if you're going to have an Australian ballot, would the polls be like 10 o'clock in the morning until 7? Yes. And it'd be on the same day? Yes. Okay. They would be able to leave their ballots 
after town meeting here, right? Because it'll be here. Yes. Likely, depending on when town meeting was set. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Sharon? Well, first I would just like to repeat what Janet said because I couldn't hear it and I don't know if it was relevant. She said if folks were voting Australian ballot and they were here at town meeting that, that they could leave their ballot here. Right. Okay. So like you do with the school. Yeah. So, David, I'm not clear on the process. It seems to be that I was hearing some conversation about what happens with somebody who wants to vote by absentee ballot and can't deliver the ballot themselves. So two people have to go out to the house? Two justices of the peace have to go. Or they can have it, they can deliver it to the But if they can't deliver it. Then they can justice. have their spouse deliver it. Their spouse can deliver it, I believe. Spouse can deliver it. They can mail it mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. And it can be mailed. And um, and if those things can't happen, two justices of the peace can go with the ballot. Uh, they vote, and then the two justices bring the ballot back. And what would the window be for ballots coming in? They wouldn't have to come in on the day of, right? It would be um, when when the ballots, I, I don't know the date, but yes, it could be before the, the meeting. Once, if anybody wants one mailed out, there is a date that they have to have requested it by, I believe. I, I think what Sherry is asking, when does it have to be returned to the town clerk's office yeah. by? I mean, by if we're, we're going to vote yes on this article tonight, I think that any questions that we have about that process, we should be able to get a clear answer. And so if we're unable to get a clear answer on that, then I would suggest that either we vote no, or perhaps we set this aside for another time. The, the, um, the ballots have to be in um, by election day. That wasn't my question. Okay, what is your question? My question was, what is the time frame? Like, they don't, yes, they have to be in by election day, and when can they start coming in? When can they be received? Do you, have, do you know the date? I think it's the um, first Wednesday before the meeting. Yeah, I, I don't have the specific date when they can first come in. They, it would be the same as the ballots for uh, the school uh, the union school uh, vote that we would have, um, but I don't have the specific date when they first can come in. All right. And when would those ballots be available to be mailed out or sent out to the townspeople if, the, if the, they choose to have them sent to them? How far in advance would they be sent to them? When would those be available? I don't know the specific date on that either, but it is like 10 days, I believe before that they have to be out. I think it might be 21 days. Maybe 21 days. That they can request a ballot. All right. Anybody else? Dennis. Oh, no, wait a minute. Go right Dennis is already. Yep. Uh, back to what you said about there was a tally at the town office of what ballots went out and what came back. I actually asked that when I was there. And I was told... No, they did not have people checked off of what ballots went out. When they came back, they'd go through the pile and check them off as they got them. Yes. So you don't know who took ballots and who didn't. That's what I was told. And we have a checklist, and when, we, when the ballots come in, I check their name off the checklist. But you're supposed to check them off when they leave for who picks them up. You can't just hand ballots to... 10 ballots to one person. And that's what happened. Well, I, I was... Dennis, Dennis. In reference to Krista's statement about the five steps to be on the ballot, if somebody is, if that's too much work for somebody to do, I question how important is their job going to be if they got elected? Are they going to be willing to do, step up and do the job if those five steps are too much? In reference to Tim's Thing about the people here. I've talked to a lot of people over the years and, and asked them why they don't come to the meetings and they're just disgusted with the way the town is run and how things go. And so I think it's time for the town maybe to try something new, which we did last March, 
and we got somewhere about about 190 voters, and it gives people a say. I I just want to say I was there counting votes last year, and I don't know anything about ballots that may have been picked up incorrectly, but I know the ones that we counted, there was a count of how many ballots went out, and we had that amount of ballots that we counted. So as far as the counting, every, I didn't see anything that went wrong. I wasn't there collecting ballots from people, so I know nothing about that. Okay. Anybody else? I think obviously, I mean, there's some concern with some people about, you know, the, the legitimacy and the counting of, of ballots and making sure that they're collected properly and all of that. But if it was the first time the town had experienced having to, you know, operate in, in that way, then obviously there's things are going to happen. But if we were to pass this, there would be, you know, set a set process and and things that people would abide by. Um, and in reference to, you know, turnout, um, I mean, I feel fairly young in this room, and I would say that from personal experience, my wife works 12-hour shifts. I oftentimes am, work, am working 10, 12-hour days, showing up and being present at a meeting, um, especially when you feel like you're a lot younger than everyone in the room can be fairly intimidating. Um, and I think with the Australian ballot, it does provide um, a greater chance for a larger portion of the voting population in town to have the opportunity to uh, cast a vote. Uh, when I first started coming to these meetings and somebody would be nominated from the floor, the first couple of years I didn't even know who those people were, but I was expected to vote one way or the other. Well, I think with Australian ballot now, at least we get a little heads up about who's vote, you know, who's going to be the candidates, and try to get an idea of what they stand for. But from the floor, somebody gets nominated. We used to look at each other and say, who's that? <laughs> so <laughs> I think if we had a little bit of heads up, you know, a couple weeks ahead of time, we could maybe make a better decision when we vote. All right. Are we, anybody else? Are we ready for the question? Yeah. Oh, Go ahead. I'd like to have the uh, chair call the question and white paper ballot. All right. Is there any objection? Is there seven people that would like a paper ballot? Raise your hand. More than seven, we will have a paper ballot. So, the question is, Article 1, shall the town of Athens select its town officers at all future annual and special town meetings by Australian ballot pursuant to Title 17, Vermont Statutes Annotated 2680B? Now, if you do want this, the answer is yes. If you do not want it, it is no. There are paper ballots here. One at a time and bring your own ballot or the justice will come up for it. Results of your ballot, 84 ballots were cast, 50 yes, 34 no. You've approved Article 1. Article 2, shall the town of Athens adopt all budget articles and monies at all future annual and special town meetings by Australian ballot pursuant to Title 17, VSA 2680C. I'll do it again for you all. Sandy. <laughs> Article 2 asks if we want to adopt all budgetary and monetary articles by Australian ballot. To this I say no. Although last year proved a record-breaking year for voting in Athens with everything done by Australian ballot, I still believe we should have a town meeting. Part of the state's enduring tradition is town meeting day. Point of order, I believe that the motion was not moved and seconded. That's correct. That's correct. That is correct. Sorry, Sandy. Is there a motion on the floor for this? Sure. There's a motion. Is there a motion? Who's the second? I'll take it. All right, Sandy. And one more 
encourage you by reading it all over again. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, not everyone can attend a uh, town meeting, but in doing Australian ballot for the voted offices, we are trying to make this day somewhat inclusive. But I feel it is a necessary part of our governing system to be able to discuss, debate, and possibly amend the articles brought before the voters. Unfortunately, we cannot have it both ways when it comes to Australian ballot. We can't discuss or amend. It is what it is. You can only vote yes or no on the articles. I don't want it that way. I don't want to lose what has been, has been a Vermont way of life since the late 1700s, but I do want people to feel, even in some small way, that they had a say in their town. Hmm. All right. Is there more discussion? Um, i just like to say that I'm all for the idea of, of keeping the town meeting, but for many of us, um, our lives don't allow us to take a day off to be at town meeting. So, as was suggested earlier by Tim, I think, maybe the possibility of relocating the time of the town meeting to either the evening or the weekend or, you know, a way that people don't have to lose work and, and time. Town meeting, as my understanding, can be amended to be on the Saturday before the, the traditional meeting, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or the traditional day of it. And the time is up to the meeting, um, the, the prior meeting, to set the time of the future town meeting. So um, that can be done. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Yeah. So following up on what you just said, so <coughs> this is a town meeting, could we tonight set the time of the March town meeting if we vote no on this article and we're going to have one? No, we can't set it tonight because it was not warned. It was on the ballot uh, last year uh, to set it at uh, the Tuesday at 10 o'clock, I believe. Okay. So it can't, be, it can't be set tonight. It has to be an article. Uh, just to go off of what Sandy said, what makes Vermont really unique about our town meeting is it's a direct democratic event. So people from the floor are able to amend articles, it's not just voting up and down. And if the vote to this is yes to move it to Australian ballot, you won't be able to amend anything. It completely removes the right to be a direct legislator and a direct lawmaker in your town. And as Sandy said, that's really important to the Vermont tradition, and I really encourage everyone to vote this article down. More yeah, I agree with Sandy on this too. I think if we vote uh, yes on this, then what's the point of even having a town meeting? What, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to discuss? Just line up the next town meeting that what's the point in going to? So I, I would think voting no would be the way to go. All right. I make a motion we move the article. I second it. Is there any objection to that? I agree. Well, you can. We can vote on it if you want. It has to be, a, I believe it's a two thirds majority to um, uh, cease debate and move the article. That's just stopping the discussion. Right? Stopping the discussion and moving the article, yes. Yeah. All right. Motion has been made and seconded to cease debate and to move the article. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 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 The ayes appear to have it. The, the nays can request a paper ballot if they want or a standing vote. Yep. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and debate is ceased on Article 2. Uh, article 2, shall the town of Athens adopt all budget articles and monies at all future annual and special town meetings by Australian ballot pursuant to the Title 17 BSA 2680C. Can I motion to reopen debate because I didn't have a chance to speak? That, we could have we could have voted on it, but no. At this point, debate has ceased. Um, can I ask a standing vote? You can ask for a standing vote on the question.
but that was when I, I offered it out that any of the nays wanted it, we could have a standing or a paper ballot on the question, but no, we've moved on from that. Do we have a most? Do we want to do this by a standing vote, or do we want to do this by a paper ballot? Move for paper ballot. Is there seven people that want paper ballots? There are seven. So, Article Two. No, will be to turn down the article. Yes, will be to affirm the article. Again, only the person brings their ballot up, or they can have a justice uh, come to the ballot. Results of your vote, 84 ballots were cast, 71 no, 13 yes. So Article 2 is defeated. Is there any other business property coming before said meeting? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I just wanted to thank the teams that worked with Matt Perry to get the uh, attic cleared out from up above. They were from the high school, and they did uh, community service and cleaned out a lot of stuff for the town. So, all right. If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion.